Welcome to Friday Fuel. How's it going? How's it going, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Friday Fuel, episode 26. We're super excited to bring you guys content. What's up, fellas? What up? What up? I'm fired up, baby. Let's go. Happy Friday. Adam had me laughing in the intro because I'm, he could see, I think you can see me practicing my, my <laughs> welcome practicing. To Friday Fuel. Friday Fuel. Uh, oh, <laughs> <laughs> I had to practice, you know, I had to, I had to lead up. That was good. That was um, good. Without further ado, we're super excited for this episode today, guys. We have someone very, very spectacular, someone that all four of us have, you know, a, a very close friendship with uh, and relationship with. And um, without further ado, do you want to bring him on here and introduce him? Yes, sir. There he is. Let's get it. What's Howdy, up? What's boys. Up, How we doing, man? I'm doing pretty good. How are y'all? Awesome. We're doing good. We're doing good. Good. Uh, we want to give you, of course, you know, a, a quick second to introduce yourself. Let everybody, you know, kind of know what you're doing, what's what you got going on. You know, I know you're you're into big things, so let's hear it. Yeah, for sure. What's up, everyone? Thanks for having me. My name's Derek Mabin. Uh, I am a licensed insurance agent. I'm with uh, All Things Insurance Group, and uh, yeah, just started selling um insurance on january 2nd so one full month ago today um and uh rocking and rolling and just happy to be here man thanks for having me and it's good to see you boys congrats on a an awesome season and really cool to watch you guys uh, on youtube and everything so cool to see your guys' friendship form from that show and um happy you guys are keeping it rolling and, and up to big things so thanks for having me yeah, man. I love that, man. I love that. What a, what a way to spend your, your first month anniversary than, than with us on, on Friday Fuel. So <laughs> it's how, yeah, it's how I dreamt it up for sure. Ever since I was a little kid, this is a, this is the moment in time I've been looking forward to. So thanks. <laughs> he is peaking <laughs> at this moment. Yes. <laughs> it's all Dude. downhill from yeah. <laughs> Derek, bro, the, the numbers we've seen from you the, this past month, your first month in the industry, bro. I think Crazy. people, I think when Adam put the put the preview out, everyone in the description, the people that saw it's like, bro, what? This guy sold yeah. first off, this guy sold 20,000 AP or even more now, sorry, in his first month and 30 yep. policies in his first month. Mm. That's wild. I didn't do that. I don't think any of these other guys did that. Nope. So I think Absolutely I think not. you should explain how did you even break this down, dude? Like how did you even do that? How did you even like begin to process that? I don't know. I couldn't even. Yeah. So I got the. I was looking up the final numbers right before we hopped on, um, and I'm actually kind of stunned myself. Um, but I rounded out. If you include yesterday, right, February first. I started January second. Um, I wrote 34 apps and did 31,344 dollars and 52 cents in AP. So. I was really wanting, I knew there were 31 days in January. I didn't start till the second. So I kind of gave myself the extra one. I was like, I, I didn't really know what to expect or how to um, really set a goal based on the first month. I just want to come in and work hard. Um, and then I kind of realized I'm like, okay, let me just try to make like one sale on average a day. Yep. And then like my sixth day doing it, I wrote like four apps cool. and I was like, wait, you can do like that much in one day. And I was like, okay, maybe I'll just make this normal. And so I've had pretty consistently uh, at least a two app day, um, you know, for the business days that I'm working. I really haven't worked much on Saturday outside of callbacks and I take Sundays off. So, um, but yeah, just to start out, I just wanted to come in and work hard. And that's really it. Like um, I had that instilled in me at a very young age. So coming in, I know I can work hard. I know I have pretty good sales skill. Um, it's just, you know, there's some anxiety when you get into a new situation or in a new trying to sell something new. Like I've never sold 
uh, to consumers before. I've always done business to business sales. So that was a big learning curve. Um, but yeah, um, I still yeah, kind of think it's surreal. The first... There's no learning curve with 30 <laughs> I don't know. Curve? It's, it's yeah, pretty I can't wait surreal. What he does when he has to like, cross <laughs> that learning curve. You're past the learning curve, dude. Good work. Yeah. Man. Well, so, dude, look at it. Like, I'm sitting in a room by myself, right? I don't know what's good from bad. I'm just out here working. Like, that's just what I tell myself. And I've told my upline, I'm like, if I do something that's like big, don't say it. Like, just say, hey, that's normal. So it just hacks my brain. Yep. Like, yep. this is the standard. <laughs> forever right that's That's really good so so i have kind of a two-part question for you number one it like being real how like hard did you work or was it like hard work or was it just like you know this is a normal nine to five like i'm just doing a job yeah that's a great question and i think i think both can be true because am i out here like i'm gonna be honest i wake up probably an hour before i hop on the dialer if that like early. Um, and so I just, you know, I, I'm much more of a morning person than I ever have been. Um, granted that morning starts at like seven, <laughs> you know, and so six forty five maybe, but typically seven. Um, but yeah, I get on a dial. I take live transfers, but, um, the hard part isn't taking the transfers, taking the calls. Cause if it's a bad call early on, I just get off that call and wait for a better one, right. Play the odds. But I mean, I took, um, I took 53 transfers last week, um, like past two, three minute conversations. Right. So that's like 10, 15 minute conversations at a minimum with these people and not the maximum, you know, 45 minutes to an hour. So, Mm -hmm. um, I think within my first like seven, 10 days of sitting on the dialer and wanting to work, um, I was talking to my girlfriend and I was just like, you know, kind of had a low spurt. Um, over a couple of days and I was like, okay, I made one sale, I made two sales. And then it was like, the numbers weren't playing out. And I just looked at her and I was like, I can see why so many people fail from this industry and why they drop out and why they like, can't find success. I said, that's not going to be me, but I can definitely now really understand why people do this. I was like, it's not a reality. It won't happen for me, but yeah. man, this is tough. Like sitting there by yourself, like, taking transfers. I'm on a new script to me. I'm on like, I didn't even know how to write an an application when I first got like all the information for my first one. So it was like four call back and forth and like my anxiety, my hands are shaking. It's like, I've done six figure deals before. And I'm like over here sweating $37 a month for someone. I'm like, Oh my God, Oh my God, Oh my God. You know? And so, um, but I think to round it back and bring your question, like I do treat it like a true, you know, nine to five or that I have hours. Like if I, I try to, you know, if I have to go to the, the restroom, I don't just like, Oh, gotta go. Like, let me get off the dialer. Like, I'm like, okay, is this like a legit time to like get off the dialer and come back? <laughs> and for my lunches, I try to, I max out at an hour if I need to make some calls or try to do some other stuff, but like 12, you know, noon hits and it's like, okay, I'm going to start my lunch. I'm going to try to get back on by 1240. And so I'm treating it you know, like that. And then, uh, you know, I know if I can hit 45 transfers, I'm going to write seven, eight K a week. Mm. Seems like, you know, on the short, small sample size I have. So yeah, yes, that's kind of how hard I'm working. I sit on the dialer, try to make myself available from eight to five and then just see what happens from there. That's so good. I think a, a lot of agents come into this and don't, I want to, I want to speak a little bit to that mentality that you just brought up the, it's not going to be me. I'm not going to be the one that quits. Can you kind of speak to that? Cause a lot of agents come in here and they kind of are just dipping their feet in and, and, and aren't willing to say, you know what, I'm not going to quit even, you know, the days that I'm having the lulls or when the sales aren't coming in, I'm putting all these dials in. So where does that come from for you? Is that, is that something that's always been instilled for you? Is that something that you know, you knew it coming into this, that you were just going to, you're going to hit it. You might come into bro bumps, but you're going to get over them. Yeah. Great question. And so for me, um, I got my first job when I was 16 years old um, out of necessity because I got a traffic ticket. And then we went to uh, my mom went to the court with me, uh, the hearing for it or whatever. And uh, um, it was like one hundred and twenty five dollars right, to pay this ticket. And I had to go do this class. So my insurance didn't go up. And uh, she looked at me. She paid it for me. Well, she paid it. And then she goes, 
all right, how are you going to pay me back? Because I paid $125 and now you're going to owe me 200 by the time interest kicks in. And I was like, holy cow. <laughs> and so I was like 16 years old. I'm like, I have birthday money from like, you know, a few months ago, I got like 20 bucks, right? You yeah. know, I didn't have a job. I didn't have an allowance. And so I was like, forget it, man. I'm going to go, I got to get a job. And so I asked my friends at school, like, Hey, what do you have? And then, um, when I got my first job, my parents sat me down and they're like, Hey, whatever job you do, they said, now that you have a job, you don't leave a job till you have another one. Mm. And when you're at that job, you work that job. I don't care who's around you. I don't care who your boss is. I don't care what you're doing. You work that job because you're working for the Lord. And so it's like, everything has been centered around that for me. Um, from a very early age. And so, um, if I know I want to do a job, I just get in there and I try to do the best I can because ultimately it's not for me. It's not for, um, my bosses or anything else. Yeah. There's a ton of cool benefit and like you can make a lot of money and have abundance. But I think the work ethic, it's just like, I want to prove to myself that I can do something and learn something new, but also I know ultimately like my life isn't up to me, you know, it's like, there's a greater purpose. And I think insurance is one of the coolest ways to really, um, honestly minister to people and, and show kindness and grace. Cause the senior market, like I'm starting with final expense and I'll move into Medicare later this year, but this senior market, man, they get left behind a lot. And a lot of people don't take the time to really get to know them or hear their stories or mm. listen to how their kids got their nickname and stuff. And, um, so my first job was at a retirement home. I've talked to seniors my whole life. Uh, and so it kind of is a full circle thing, but yeah, that work ethic. Moment. Yeah, that, that work ethic, it's always been there. And sometimes I just kind of trick myself and say, I'm too stupid to quit. You know, I'm like, I'm too dumb to realize I'm bad at something. And then I just wait until I'm good at it. <laughs> so that's, uh, that's kind of been the goal, but yeah, I don't, I don't think you should do anything without working hard at it really. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. So if you can't do that, it's time to find a new thing. That's my motto on it. Or a new personality, honestly. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true too. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, if you there's can't work hard. You, you gotta like look inside and be like, okay, hey, is this the opportunity or is this me? Because oh, one hundred percent. Blame it way too much on the opportunity, and it's just like, no, do you take a look in the mirror? That's on you. Like, hmm. and it's just yeah. You, you got to find an, a, a new personality if, if that's too often. But. Yeah, that's so true. And you had it, you experienced that on the show. Um, you know, that line, you can't outsell a bad attitude, yeah. right? How yeah. huge was that? And and what a big learning curve. And um, my, my uncle, um, he was kind of the first, my great uncle, he was kind of the first like businessman I ever saw like in action or just kind of observed. And as you get older, like, man, this guy has a big house. This guy has nice cars. This different stuff. And you're just like, man, what's he doing? And he had this motto that just, um, is he just would say it all the time. And, and that's how he always gave advice to just work hard, do good. And that's how he ran like all of his businesses. That's what he made his decisions off of. That's how he acted. It's just work hard, do good. And I tattooed it on my leg and have it there. And it's just like, man, that's what I want to encompass. And so if I'm working hard and I'm doing good, you know, I can't, really go wrong our brain yep. doesn't our brain doesn't allow gratitude and anxiety to exist at yep. the same time it's impossible mm. like there's there's studies that prove that so if i'm doing good and working hard i'm probably gonna have some gratitude there yep. and so the anxiety can't even exist of like oh my gosh where am i gonna go what am i gonna do where's this next sale gonna come from mm. i'm fumbling over my words so it's uh yeah man just rewire yourself to be positive i guess that's the only thing i can yeah say. i that's a really good point. I think most people, uh, I think majority of people also fail in this industry, just like what you said, Derek. I think they they lack gratitude. I think everybody's so focused on the next move or the next thing that's coming up that they don't even appreciate where they're at right now. You know, they either like holding on something from the past or they're like, well, I'm going to get this in a week or two weeks. I'm going to have this big annuity sale in a week or two weeks. Like they're not, you know, content where they're at but, you know, um, striving to be better in the future. You know what I mean? That's another good point. Another thing that I picked up on what you said is you said most uh, retirees get left behind. And you said you, people, agents don't get to actually get to get to know the individual, right? At an emotional level, right? Because 
you're selling life insurance. We're all selling life insurance, right? You have to connect. Mm -hmm. One thing I learned from Roger at the ultimate age is you have to connect with them on an emotional level, right? So you start getting to know about their kids. They start talking about their kids over and over and over again. So now once you put it out in front of them, hey, how would you feel if you know you had this for your kids if you passed away? They already talked about their kids for five to 10 straight minutes. Of course, they can't say no. You know what I mean? Because yeah. they don't have anything in place. Right. Right. So that's another key point, bro. Really, really good stuff that you're you're dropping out there for everybody. But a question I did have for you, bro. Um, obviously, the hard work, the hard work's all there. Right. But what structures and systems do you have in place to go get the 34 policies in a month? Because everybody knows hard work. A lot of people don't do it. It sounds really elementary, right. but it's it's the truth. You have to work hard. But what systems do you have in place to obtain that 34 policies? Yeah, totally. And and I think uh, I'll go back to even Adam's first question there. I say hard work. It's really not like hard, right? Yeah. Like the work, the work isn't hard. I <laughs> sit in this spot all day long. Like I'm sitting, my legs are crossed, like in the chair. Like I'm not even, I'm wearing shorts. Like this isn't that hard to like get <laughs> I into. All of us are shorts, so. Yeah, right. And so, uh, um, but for me, it's just my upline had a really great opportunity to help me get off, you know, the ground. I'm in an LOA program um, with Pete, which you guys had on a few weeks ago. So yeah. um, if you want to know more about how he has his agency set up, like that's a great video to go back and watch. But they just told me, uh, say the words yeah. and say them over and over and over again and say them enough times to enough people, right? So I have the words, I have my 10 page script right here. I've done probably 200 calls this month, right? If I average 40 to 50 calls a week, I've probably done close to 200 calls in a month. Okay, I should probably have this memorized by now, but I still look at it. You can see it's like getting worn out and I don't even have a stapler. So it's just, I kind of flip it like a book every time, but uh, mm -hmm. I go through the script and the opening is always, hello, final expense department. This is Derek extension 3003 on a recorded line. I don't like vary from that. I don't deviate from anything yeah. that's in here. Yeah. I may have to piece it together a little different, but I hit all the spots because I don't know anything, but I do know that this is a 13 year script in the making from my upline. And they have the system that says, take, you know, every 2.3 hours of talk time results in a sale. Mm they have that data for me. And so, you know, I take X amount of calls, I get a sale. I talk 2.3 hours, I'm getting a sale. I And so to me, I don't care if that's, you know, 25 bucks a month. I've had $20 a month policies because that's just what the client needed or could afford and I just need to help them. And I've had $198 a month policy. So my system is to get on at 8 a.m., you know, as soon as the dialer can open or like really close to it now, a lot of days it's 8, 10, 8, 15. I'm going to be honest. And, but I sit there until I take my lunch and I say the words and I try to do as much of it as I can. And if I don't know something I ask, um, and I don't just like allow myself to sit here and drown. So mm. my system is using the script, using it a lot. And, um, I always just kind of joke and tell people sales is just saying words. Like we already all know <laughs> words. You just got to put them in the right order. <laughs> yeah. I, I think one thing that I kind of want to touch on with that from what I'm gathering is you're really good at removing the emotion from it. Yep. It's just like, dude, this is and, and I feel like that's where a lot of agents fail. I have my own kind of tracker here to where it's just like. It doesn't matter if you have if you know your numbers, it doesn't matter if you have a crappy streak because you know that you're also probably going to have a good streak. It's just how it works. And so I feel like that's really good to take away from today. It's just like, know your numbers. You know that every 2.2 hours or whatever it is that you're going to get a sale. That way you don't get commission breath when it's been mm -hmm. forever, when it's been three yeah. hours straight that you've had, you know, a crappy go at things because totally. you don't want that to affect your next three hours that you might get 10 really good people. So it's like, dude, just like take the motion from it and just know your numbers and do good. One other thing that I wanted to touch on too, um, I had a, uh, there's a sales book written by like a sales therapist that I'm going to have to go back and see um, who it's written by. But he basically said it's very important to label your emotions correctly because he's mm -hmm. like this feelings of anxiety and the feelings of excitement have the same symptoms to your body. 
So, and I, when I did door to door sales, I would get like, and this is where, when I read the book, cause I would tell myself that I'm like anxious. Cause it's like, dude, I don't want to go knock doors. Like you get that thumping in your chest or it's like, mm-hmm. you get kind of shaky and that little mind trick of like, actually, no, I'm like, my body's excited. Like, I yeah. Go through this. And so label your emotions correctly, label them positively. Mm. Uh, and so if you're, you're feeling anxious or whatever it is, trick your mind and be like, no, I'm like actually excited to go do those things. Cause yeah. Anyways. So true. That's, no, that's so true. Um, every day I wake up and I take too hot of a shower to where it steams up the bathroom so much that like, it's hard to breathe. And so I go through this like panic mode of like a heave every morning, like, because I'm like, this is, and I'm, I told you guys, I'm going to be as honest as possible. So I wake up and that takes over and I'm like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my gosh. Like what's going to happen. And, uh, you know, it's like, dude, that's straight anxiety, right? Like I haven't prayed yet. I haven't like listened to any good music or anything yet. And I'm just like, what is going to happen today? Like I, what have I got myself into? It's, you know. I made two sales like in the morning yesterday, but then nothing in the afternoon. And I'm like, you know, that first full week, like Monday to Friday, our, our agency, we do like Wednesday to Tuesday is kind of how the week looks, which I think is brilliant because I can go, you know, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then get a little break. And then Monday, Tuesday is still considered the same week. And, uh, it was crazy. Cause like my second full week, right. I didn't even know that's how they did that. And so I'm just thinking like Monday to Friday and I'm like, dude, it's been since like Tuesday since I've really done anything of note. And it was like Friday at 2 PM and like had a couple transfers that were just bad. And like, I was going to get billed for them. And you know, they just weren't that interested. I'm like, Oh, these fronters are terrible. This stuff's so bad. And I'm just like, the anxiety is coming. And I think it's so right to label the emotion, but if you are anxious about something, label what you're anxious about. I'm not anxious about selling something to somebody. I'm not anxious about not having the communication skill to talk with someone and just like educate them on what insurance is. Yeah. I'm anxious because I got bills. I'm anxious because I got a truck payment. I'm anxious because like I want to do something that's like not going to a movie for two bucks or like, you know, watching Netflix. Like I want to do fun, cool things. I want to go to concerts. I want to do this stuff. So my anxiety isn't in this box of logging onto my computer and taking calls. (laughs) That takes nothing. The hard part is when that door shuts to let everything stay out there. And you're absolutely right. Flip that anxiety to be like, okay, I'm so excited at the opportunity that I can come in here and help someone and potentially, you know, change their life and the course of their family's life. Like it makes me, it's so cool to see someone um, where you can kind of tell, like even on the phone, you can tell when people are down and out. It's so cool to put like a twenty, thirty thousand dollar (laughs) policy in place for someone that wants a cremation. Cause you know, that cremation is only going to be like, eight grand max, right? That's $12,000. They get to like send to their family as they pass away. And, you know, you just kind of pray that, that they're going to be responsible with it and do something good. But it's like, man, these people haven't seen five grand at one time in their life, probably it's like, man, a man. lot of them. And so to be able to know that their family is going to get 12, 10, five grand in one thing, like how big is that going to be? And maybe that sparks something for their legacy and they get to look back and be fond of their dad or grandma or whoever who took that time. Like life insurance is so selfless to, to take out. And, um, you know, I just try to reiterate that to my clients. And, and when I am anxious, I'm like, dude, this is nothing. Like, yeah. I'm still alive. I'm still doing this stuff. I'm still making money. Like these people, this is a life or death situation, like legitimately for them. If they can't do it, like I've had bills that, um, you know, I've taken loans out for, I have, I have taken like credit cards and, and floated myself that way before. And it's just like, man, that's crushing. And so, but I've never had to do that while grieving. Mm. <laughs> like that's what people do, man. I don't know if you guys yeah. have gone through the grief process, but like when my dad passed away, I didn't have to worry about a lot of this stuff that he had, and my mom had it taken care of and he had a policy <laughs> in place. And so it covered the expenses and they were able to float everything else. So it's like, man, I, I can't imagine going through that hardest point in my life 
and then having to try to get with a bank or a credit card or get a loan to <clears> then <throat> pay for this stuff and not be bitter at that. So, mm. you know, I, it's, if I feel anxious, I really don't have it that bad, dude. I live in America and I get to like work whatever hours <laughs> I want and make some sweet money and watch the chiefs hopefully win a super bowl. So uh, like life's, uh, not, that, uh, <laughs> life's uh, not that tough. Uh, life is not that uh, tough. <laughs> my, my line's got it next year. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Go for it on fourth and two twice, dude. Jesus. That's hey, not even hey. Dan Campbell's fault. Hey, that's not even Dan Campbell's fault, bro. That's the stats. You got to do that. You got to bro. Put them but away, our receiver oh, dropped it both times, bro. Call it. You our don't have to. It both times, bro. Both times. That's not Dan Campbell's fault. I love the I love the call, bro. Receiver has to catch a damn football. That's it. Yeah, no, that's going to go hey, for momentum. We'll, you we'll can talk. learn that. You can learn something from that, man. Keep your foot on the gra- on the gas, even if it's not a uh, um, a time to be aggressive. Like keep your foot on the gas and learn and fail, so you know what not to do the next time. What they kick a couple field goals and they come back and tie it, and then they lose in overtime. You get the same result. Yep. You know, like if you're gonna play it safe, like. I don't know. I don't know, man. Don't play it safe. Like, I, I, this, I, the, the I was principle, thinking about the that. The principle's good because that's like that was their identity the whole time. But it's just like, dude, looking back when I was like really cheering for the Lions to to win, it's like, bro, you got to catch that or you got to kick that field goal because they had that turnover. Yeah, the strategy. And it, it just flipped the momentum like that. They kicked the field goal. Then they're kicking it off. Who knows if they score? It's just like, dude, that gave them dude, the momentum. They've, they've never been in that spot. So, like, that's where your experience, right? Mm. How much next time around, how much more experience are they going to have to make that decision? Right yeah, now, I'm dude. just trying to fail as fast as possible with Love what me. I'm doing. I've never been in this spot. I've never been solely a 1099 person. You know, I've never sold insurance. So, I'm just like, screw it. Like I'm going to fail as quick as possible. I, I messed up. Uh, I didn't count one of these. I really wrote 35 apps, but one of them was an accident because I took the call uh, from what I thought was, so I had Brenda and Donna the same day and Brenda, her daughter called me and Donna's daughter also called me. Well, Brenda's daughter called with bank account information and I thought it was Donna's daughter, but I already put Brenda's account application into place so i really wrote the wrong person a policy it charged brenda's daughter's account so i had to go back and fix it i'm like dude i've made the amount of mistakes i made i messed up on my mom's birthday when i wrote her policy so when they sent the app to do the pin it messed up and i had to go back to my upline and be like i'm so sorry i didn't know my mom's birthday like dude i i'd tell you what like it sound i could sit here and be like oh it's great it's all good dude i put the wrong person's bank account information onto the wrong policy like that's a catastrophe <laughs> like <laughs> and i found out in the morning and i still made two sales later that day i was like all right cool they're gonna fix it like we'll get it you refunded done screw, you done that's why you have that's why you have <laughs> you know insurance <laughs> oh for sure i'm like hey how do i get more of that because i don't see myself slowing down anytime soon but no they were cool i called i got it fixed and stuff but it's like Man, that's like such an embarrassing thing to mess up on and like so avoidable. But you know what? I did it and everyone was, you know, like forgiving of it. I owned up to it. And so, um, you know, we got it all fixed. But it's like I didn't know that I should save people's kids information in my phone when they call me like or save it the right way. I don't know. So, it, yeah, that was kind of a, a major mess up. But, dude, if you. You can't have all good and no bad, like. <laughs> Dude, you know? I, I, guess I, what? You won't make that same mistake again. No, I will not. <laughs> I can remember back when to touch on your story, Derek. When I first started in the industry, I was in my first house, first house, first solo house. I went on ride alongs or whatever because I, I run field. But my first solo house, I was in the house for seven hours. I really didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> So I, I called my dad like multiple times. And I, was, I was in the home for seven hours and all I ended up writing was a life insurance policy and an ancillary <laughs> cancer product. That's it. Seven hours, seven hours bro. bro. But did, I had to go they feed, there. did they feed you breakfast, lunch, and dinner? <laughs> I, they got me some cookies, but dude, no, I was so fresh and like green That's to wild. the industry, bro. And I yeah. really didn't know what I was doing, but 
even in the beginning, I think everybody messes up, you know, and that was yeah. one actually mess up that I had because it should have never took me seven hours, but I didn't know what the hell I was doing. You <laughs> it know? took a nap. <laughs> yeah, he, yeah, they're about to take a credit card down for incidentals on the room you're staying at. <laughs> <laughs> you should have bought their policy, honestly. Yeah. You took yeah. up so much of their time. No, that's, it's so true, but people, like it's crazy. I started with a guy, um, kind of at the same time in the in you know, with the agency I'm with, and he slacked me one day. He goes, Man, this is like really hard, huh? And I was like, Yeah, but like they tell us that the numbers are gonna pan out and you know, I'm just gonna trust the people that have done this. Like my upline, like Pete's written a hundred thousand dollars in a month. Like, I'm gonna listen to me or I'm gonna listen to him. Like, what are what are we talking about? So uh yeah, it's just it's crazy because man, if people don't get a quick win, they, it's tough. And, you know, I've been in sales five and a half, six years. So hopefully some of that, you know, I know a lot of that's helped turn me into who I am and I can't discredit like, you know, a good sales track record and, and everything. So it's, uh, yeah, I know I'm getting kind of a head start on some people, but cause I have good sales training in the past, but still, man, I'm just as nervous as everyone else hopping on the phone. Like, my first few calls of the day, I'm like, okay, can I like get one? Can I get one? Can I get one? Like, like, all right. So yeah, some people wake up angry, like, you know, oh, I haven't accomplished enough. I wake up and I'm like, ooh, am I like good at this? Like I wake up with fear because I'm like, ah, am I actually like quality at doing stuff? And so then I'm like, okay, let me listen to a worship song or, you know, like watch a Joey Diaz video and get me pumped up. I don't know. So um, but yeah, man, I've I've messed up a lot and I have a lot of anxiety about you know, making this thing work. So, um, great yeah, question. Why haven't Eric. I written? Why haven't you written a hundred thousand in a month yet? Uh, I didn't normalize it fast enough. So, <laughs> is that that's Matt really it. Is that who it yeah, is like probably it has to be. Has to be. Is a troll. <laughs> I think one thing I kind of want to touch on too is so I mean that guy that messaged you that started. One of my sales mentors he told me never complain sideways, complain up. Oh, because totally. the, the person that's above you is going to bring you up where the person that's beside you, you're just going to commiserate and stay at the same place. Mm. So whenever you're having a hard time, don't go to your coworker that's at the same level as you are and complain because you're just going to commiserate in the pit. Go to somebody who's been through what you're doing and has overcome it. And so that's that's I just wanted to commend you. Oh, for that's it. huge. Yeah. That's huge. Well, thanks. Yeah, because I, I had a couple things and i tried complaining up like once i'm like man these leads kind of bad today huh and they're just like <laughs> <laughs> and uh they were like uh yeah it's gonna happen and then that was that and i was like yeah. and then like okay you need anything else i was like uh, 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 uh no i'm good and then i just hopped back on the dialer and i had gone like two days without making you know or really any headway that first week i was doing it and i'm like okay numbers 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 i told the other guy i'm like trust numbers they're telling me to trust the numbers. And it was like Friday afternoon, like two or three o'clock back to back sales was able to combine for like 2,100 bucks in AP. And I'm like, okay, what was I ever were like, I got this, like no one should ever be afraid of this, you know? And so it's dude, I'm just playing the numbers and, and my upline and everyone else, you know, that has experience around me is saying that, Hey, just trust this and do this. And so again, I, I don't have enough experience to even trust myself with my thoughts <laughs> for selling insurance yet. So I'm just going to take everyone else's, you know, my upline and, and everyone else who's had success, like take their word for it. So. And one, one thing I want to point out is kind of this overarching uh, idea that, that you are so incredibly coachable, Derek. It's, it's insane. You, you speak about all these key figures in your life and you're, and you're pulling out pieces of advice that they've given you that you've then given an example of how you use that in real life. Can you speak to how important it is not to just have good mentors in your life, but to be coachable and willing to learn and say, you know, I'm not the smartest in the room and I'm going to take their advice because I don't know what I don't know. Yeah, absolutely. It, um, I don't know when that really developed for me, but you know, I just am a natural, I'm a bad like school, like kind of book learner, but I'm just a really good, Hey, let me pick this up. Oh, this person said something. I go to a lot of comedy shows. And so it's like, you know, you hear someone say something and kind of how they deliver it. And it's like, wow, that's like, that's really funny. Or how they like captivate an audience. I'm like, that's, 
super cool. So I'm like, how did he do that? Right. Like, I just want to (laughs) know what stuff is. One of my favorite shows growing up was like how it's made or like some of those modern Marvel type shows. And so it's just like knowing how stuff works and it can go well is, is really cool. Now, am I going to go build something or like take a calculator apart and like put it back together? No, but (laughs) the coachability thing, it just, nobody wants to be around someone who thinks they're smart. Like, Mm -hmm. like who, and I know people want confidence and you want to be smart. Like you don't want to hang around like dumb people, but if you're like the smart guy in your friend group, there's probably a side, like a side text about you with the rest (laughs) of your friend. Like there's another group chat. If you know everything, you know? And so it's just like, I just don't, (laughs) I don't want to be that guy, but I also, I don't know, man. It just, it just makes sense to listen to people that do well. And there's in my network, like I have a pretty big network and I'm so grateful for all the people that have like reached out to me and given me encouragement. But really right now I'm only listening to a couple, like two, three key people when it comes to the advice that I need for me right now, because I could, I could hear how to do this script. There's probably someone that would do this backwards and say the words upside down, like, and still get a sale. And they think, okay, they're going to swear by that. So, you know, the coachability thing, man, if you like what Colin said, if you, if you can't look in the mirror and say, okay, maybe I'm like the one that's messing up here. Um, I'm a big proponent, like just take the responsibility. Like when I messed up that checking account thing, or when I, you know, had to call someone back cause I fat fingered their address and they were already pissed at me for, you know, having to ask them, okay, can you repeat that? Can you repeat that? Like enough times I'm just like, I'm so sorry I messed up. You're know, like, dude, that's all it is. I can't control them or, or anything else. I'm a big believer. Like people are going to buy if they want to buy their, not going to buy if they don't want to buy. I'm not really here to force them into things. I can guide them, but like, I'm trying to coach them how I'm getting coached, right? Like I'm trying to coach them to be a client through the process. But um, yeah, the coachability thing, man, if you don't have that, and if you're sitting here saying like, oh yeah, I have that. I got that in the bag. You probably don't. (laughs) If you're like getting aggressively like, yeah, I'm coachable. It's like, no, it takes a little bit more humble approach. Like, yep. You know, I think that's I, so so key what you just said, and I think so many people screw up on that step of really just taking coaching and like what you're doing from one or two important people and kind of ignoring everybody else. Not in like an arrogant way, but if, if you're taking in too much information from too many sources, it can really muddy the water and you'll absolutely. just get confused. And yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and I think it's it's so important to just choose one or two people and take their advice and just stick yep. with that. Yeah. Alex or Moses, uh, this is when it really clicked for me because when I first got into sales, this whole like thing, um, you know, it, it changed my life, right? So I think it's changed all of our lives. The ability to be in sales, like you never grow up people saying, Oh, they want to be a salesperson. I'm like, dude, I don't know why. And so when I got into sales and realized this, like, you know, the only other motivational stuff I ever heard was like from the Bible which is all good. And a lot of this motivation self-help stuff does have biblical principle to it, which is cool. So when I first got into sales, it was like, I'm going to follow all of these motivation accounts and I'm going to follow the individuals I see, you know, reposted on these motivation accounts. And then I'm going to read all these books. I'm going to take all this in. And I'm like, okay, sweet. And that everything was good at that time, right? When I first got into it, I first did it. It's all really good to have that coming in. And then I saw a video from Alex Hermosi. He goes, okay, but then when you progress, you need to realize, yes, a lot of this stuff can be good, but what's the best for me? And so I unfollowed like 70% of these accounts that I had. And I'm like, who do I line up with the most? Who do I yep. you know, need to hear from? And so that was on a macro scale. So then when it came to the micro, I'm like, okay, I'm working, you know, trying to build something for myself and my legacy. And then (laughs) second, I'm also, I have a big fear of like disappointing people. So if it's like my upline or my managers or bosses, whoever, you know, I want to do right by them because they're giving me a shot and an opportunity. And so, you know, I separate all the stuff that's like everything that could be good. And I'm going to zero it into who are they listening to? What are they, you know, my upline saying and how is the success rolling from them? So it's not, you know, as a rude way, but it's just, Hey, let me block out any distraction. And so I can, 
I know what I'm going to show up to do. I'm going to show up. I'm going to get on the dialer. I'm going to read the script and I'm going to submit apps. And I'm like, okay, that's my job. So <laughs> everything else, investing in real estate, investing in stocks, crypto, whatever, like all that stuff that all these big people, e-commerce, everything else. That's, there's a time and place for that. It's just not for me right now. Like I yeah. got to figure this thing out and then I can expand. Like I'm only selling final expense life insurance right now. I will not even, you know, think about doing a Medicare policy until I get properly trained on it, go to the home yeah. office and like go through this stuff. And I restart the process of, well, they know what they're doing and I don't. Yeah. So then I'll worry about that. But for now, I just kind of tee it up from my upline and they help take care of it, which is the beauty of the the model that I'm in. So that's and I think great that, thing. Sorry. That's, that you said, um, Alex Hermosi also taught about that. Like he had a bunch of plastic cups and he like had one cup of water and he's like, what a lot of people try and do is they try and fill up all the cups at once with the water and it just gets spread thin. And so you give like a little bit of effort here, a little bit of effort here, yep. but then you're not really successful at anything. But mm. if you would just take the water, fill one cup and then refill your cup, and fill another cup then you have like all of these cups that are full and now yeah. you're like an expert at all of these things and you have all of this income coming in right so just focus on one thing till till you're comfortable and you're really good at it and then start putting your effort somewhere else when you can sort of delegate right i think that totally you're doing a good job with that thanks there's no, there's no money in medicare anyway <laughs> tim yeah. that's got to be uh, tim and I think I think Colin can speak to that. <laughs> yeah, there's there's no money in Medicare. Stay away from Medicare. I haven't heard yeah, anyone I'll, make I'll money there. Don't no worry, he'll struggle but, by himself over there. I know we're like making the joke and stuff, but like that's such a serious play. And once you learn how to sell, right? Like that's always the big temptation. Like, ooh, residuals, but it's like, yeah, it's residual because it like delays payment and like it comes in a little bit later. You got to figure out how to make money now too. Yep. So yep. it's yep. like. That's, it is the the tasty treat that residual stuff, but dude, you're not even promised tomorrow. So if you're not good at Medicare and that's not your sole thing to set out to do, if you became a life insurance agent, be a life insurance agent yeah. till you can take on being more than just a life insurance yeah. agent. Like 100%. That's, I don't know. I, have, I don't have that experience. That's just what my upline told me. So I'm just repeating what they say. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Up and beyond just the, you know, going too many different places for a mentor. I think also kind of like you mentioned, Derek, people come to the industry, like you said, going in between too many things at one time, you know what I mean? Trying to sell life insurance, trying to sell Medicare, but trying to jump in the annuity space as well. Good thing oh for you. You're, yeah. you're narrowing it down to one thing, which is final expense. But what's cool about when you dive into Medicare, because you're trying to perfect your life insurance side of it right now, is you have life insurance on the front end, but then you have Medicare on the back end too. You know what I mean? So yeah. you're going to have really the best of both worlds once you master it because that's something that I did as well is I have life insurance on the front end and the back end Medicare. Same thing for Colin because I know he does Medicare as well, but the residuals are always going to be there, bro. So it's it's on, it's really game changing to see, you know, after in yeah. my year three now, you know, of Medicare and life together. Totally. And that's uh, one thing I talked with uh, Pete about um, <laughs> either earlier this week or like Saturday or last week. Um, he was like, you know, I just said, man, I'm excited at what the potential of this can be. Um, yeah. I know I need to stay really consistent with the thing I'm in now, but I can already see like what's to come and the potential here. Um, and, you know, he's even told me, he's like, dude, you keep this up. You can make like 500 grand in your third year or whatever. And yeah. I'm like, okay. That... And I finally asked him like, are these real numbers? And then he's like, yeah, it could be. And I'm like, okay. And I'm like, how? And he's not afraid to tell me what the process looks like. And so for me, it's like, I'm going to, going to try to be a year ahead of anyone that comes and joins on a team under me, you know, whenever that time comes and when it's right. Um, so right now it's like my year this year, it looks like getting really good at final expense life sales and then adding Medicare so I can get through my first enrollment period and like build up some of that and have a small, you know, book to, to walk into next year. But then you know, next year I could start learning more of the term stuff, more of the yeah. IUL annuity. So then yeah. in year three, I have a good, um, I'm well-rounded with final expense, Medicare, maybe some IUL stuff. But then if I like really build out a team next year, well, what do I have a year head start on for them? Final expense and Medicare. And I can show them <laughs> that process. And in the background, I'm going to be learning yeah. the IUL, the annuity, the advanced stuff. And so then year three, what is my year one people? What do they progress to? 
the term IUL annuity. So they have that and then they can duplicate. So um, that's some of the mindset. Like I'm starting with the end in mind with this thing, like back to football, you don't do off season. You don't do mini camp. You don't do training. You don't do practice. You don't do all that stuff to play the third game of the season. You do all that stuff to get as far as you can and to be able to play and win the last game of the season. Only one person gets to walk away and win their last game. There's, what, 32 teams in the NFL? 31 of them lose their last game just about if they make the playoffs. So I guess you can win your last game and not make the playoffs, but you lost enough to – it shouldn't be a win. And so anyone that has a chance to compete, they lose their last game, and only one person gets to win. Right now, I'm cool if I lose, like, the last game, but it's the divisional round of the playoffs because that means I'm, like, getting close to, like, being really, really good. Yeah. But I'm not putting in this work to play the, you know, for June of this year. <laughs> like I'm putting in the work now and trying to learn this stuff so I can help, you know, hopefully in the future, you know, 10, 15 agents be able to do the same thing I'm doing and then be able to sell this thing off or, you know, build a legacy or have a kid and pass it down to them. Or if God forbid something happens to me, you know, pass it off to my family and help them have some income. Like the potential is endless. So I'm trying to start with the end in mind the best I can, but dude, I'm not practicing for, you know, reading my script so I can be better on Tuesday next week. I'm practicing my script so it can be automatic. And anytime I need money or need to fund something, I'm like, all right, let me just go sell some life insurance and I'll yep. make the money to do it. So yep. Yep. then you're winning, you, right? <laughs> yeah. Are you doing any referral gathering, Derek? Um, not yet. I know I need to be doing better. Um, it's in, it is in my script to do some of that stuff. Uh, and I just haven't, uh, kinda, over it. yeah, kind of haven't had enough in me to do it. I'm like, let me just, let me just get the wins like now. Yeah, um, yeah. but I'm trying to get better, but I got, I know I got two people's kids, uh, phone numbers, uh, nice. that I could call and try to sell <laughs> for when I messed it up. Uh, so I got two of those, but, yep. um, yeah, I'll, yep. I'll text. Sometimes I'll text the, the beneficiaries if i get their phone number or anything like hey just set this up for your mom or mm. whatever um yep. i always like to send a a picture of me and my girlfriend to some of my clients if they text um so then they like yeah, yeah. see me and so it's like a picture of me and my girlfriend and in the picture looking at it i'm on the right and she's on the left and i always make the joke yep. i'm like hey there's a picture of me so you know what i look like i'm the one on the right by the way and they're like ha, 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 ha. you know but the referral thing, I need to, I need to kind of grow a pair. Dude, Pete's got a good referral. That. Yeah, Pete's I know. got a good referral strategy too. I've implemented some of the stuff he's ta taught me from SWAT and stuff, dude. Crazy, bro. Crazy. Yeah, I have it right here. It's in the script. Obtaining yep. referrals. Like I, the beneficiaries are. You get three beneficiaries. Yep. Those are three referrals, bro. Like that, dude. Yeah. All those beneficiaries to, up. Boom. I need to get better at that for sure. So. Dude. Well, sweet, yeah, geez, though, Derek, you've only you've already been doing it for 31 days. Yeah, how yeah. dare me? Yeah, I'm not <laughs> Alexander Salah ripping, you know, multi comma seminars over here. You know, he's <laughs> tearing it up, dude. I think that's a, a great way to end it, with Derek. We very much appreciate your unique perspective, and we know you're going to absolutely, <laughs> absolutely kill it and and go on to do great things on a great agency. So we just want to say thank you. As always, we want to thank our sponsor, Medicare Machine Factory and yeah. Joshua Youngs. Without them, this wouldn't be possible. Thank you, Joe and Tony and the insurance syndicate. Without further ado, y'all have a good Friday. Go kill it. That's yeah. it. Let's go. We'll give right. you an update. We'll come back with an update in a few months. How about that? See where Absolutely. I'm at then. Let's Absolutely. get it. We'll have you back on, bro, for sure. Awesome. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, guys. This Let's is cool. It. See you, Dan.